Capital Hoops here. Today I am joined by 2019-20 SEC Player of the Year, Emmanuel Quickly, IQ. Uh, I appreciate you joining me. I know it's been, I've been a while since you've been on the Capital Hoops channel. Yeah. But uh, first off, congratulations. That's an incredible honor for you to take home. And uh, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I want to hear. I want to hear about how you learned that you had been named SEC Player of the Year. I know you told me off air a quick little story, but tell tell me again exactly how you how were you how you were made aware of that. Well, I was actually in class and uh, I was taking a test, and uh, one of my teammates, you know, he kept pss, pss, yo. I'm like, what? He was like, yo, you won. I'm like, would I win? <laughs> like, and he was like, uh, you won Player of the Year, and then my heart just dropped. I'm like, wow. Um, I had actually had a dream the night before that I had won. That was really cool. They told me they told me that they was going to announce the next day, but I had just forgot all about it. I was so into taking my test. So, uh, but, yeah, that's how I found out. So you just had to, like, regroup and just, like, keep taking the test? Or, or did everyone in the class, like, realize what was going on? And It was uh, – it was. he tried to keep it quiet. He was kind of near me, so everybody in the class didn't know. My teacher eventually found out what we was talking about. He was wondering why we was talking during the test. But uh, it was it was pretty cool just to have that moment with my teammates and stuff like that. And how'd you do on the test? I think I, I think I did good. I hope I did good. I, I can't remember. It was, a, it was it's been like a couple months now, but I think I did good. Tell me about your two years at Kentucky. Um, last time I think we were like really like doing stuff together was when you made your commitment, and right after that we did the uninterrupted video and they came down. But just take me through your journey quickly over the last two years. It's been crazy. A lot of ups and downs, roller coaster ride, uh, challenges, adversity. Uh, but it's been great, you know. Um, like I say, all glory to God. Uh, been a, been a, a tough, but a lot of fun three years. It's, it's just been su such a roller coaster, I'd say. Um, with you know not playing a lot my freshman year, and then coming back and doing what people thought I couldn't do, and winning SEC Player of the Year. You know, it's just been a you know a fun ride. What do you think, what was like the number one challenge or what was the most difficult time or the most adversity that you faced in your Kentucky career? Um, I would say the biggest challenge was even this year. I started coming off the bench. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't end up starting until four or five games into SEC play. So I didn't, I didn't really get on this role until really the SEC started. I was still coming off the bench early in the season. So even early in the season, I'm like, dang, I, I, I might, you know, I might have to, you know, I got to keep working because I'm, I'm still not, you know, even projected to go to the draft yet. So, you know, early in the season, it was a, it was a pretty big struggle for me. But between that and my freshman year, you know, that, that was kind of, you know, pr pretty much the biggest challenges between those two years. Talk to me about your decision to go to, to go into the draft. Was that, like, who, who, who helped you make that decision? And why do you think that it's the right – the right decision um myself my my family gd um my coaches helped uh helped me uh they they was they stuck behind me with my decision uh but we just felt you know sec player of the year at kentucky i mean it it, it really you really can't come back and do to I'm, I'm, unless i want player of the year or something like i mean right. it, it ain't really much you can do so uh, i felt like i had a lot of individual success the team success was there as well so we won, I think we went like 27 and six or something like that. So, um, you know, it wasn't too much I could come back and do. I felt like my time at B, with BBN was done. Kentucky is kind of known, at least through the media, as one of the very few schools that like really wants to get their guys to the pros early. Like they like the one and dones, the two and dones. Like they, they like to shuffle their guys into the NBA. The other colleges, like, they want you to stay there so you can help their team win. But Kentucky doesn't really have that mindset, at least from the outside. Is that perception reality? Um, honestly, people think about it like that. But honestly, the coaches and even the assistant coaches, they are going to push you to where you don't have an option but to c continue to get better and to continue to grow. So it's not necessarily that we have to get this dude out in one year or two years. It's the fact that each and every day you're going to work as hard as you possibly can to continue to get better, continue to develop your game, as well as off the court, continue to become more of a man so that you're ready for that next level just faster than other schools can. Going back to the whole one and done and two and done thing, when you were in your freshman year and you weren't playing a ton and maybe you weren't, 
producing a ton. Like as a McDonald's All American, you see all the other guys in that game who are like going crazy, and you're not doing that. Did you ever have second thoughts about, damn, was Kentucky really the right spot for me, or should I think about entering the transfer portal? Um, you know, I, the transfer portal, no, but you know, Kentucky, you know, just being hard, it was hard. I mean, it was game, it was days where, I, or games where I didn't play, and literally that night I got in the gym because I, I really didn't get that. I didn't really didn't get in the game, so. Um, it was, it was nice like that, but, you know, like I said, it was all worth it at the end of the day. Just continue to kept, keep grinding and, and eventually got better and better, and, and you see what the, what the results were. Talk to me about what you're doing during the whole COVID-19 thing. Obviously, basketball players are in a tough spot, especially a guy like you who's trying to, you know, get drafted in the next month or two. Where does that leave you, and what are you able to do to, you know, keep your game in tip-top shape? Um, running at home around, I got a couple of hills. Uh, I got that training match just to keep my conditioning up, uh, push-ups, lifting at home, ball handling at home. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, uh, talking to you off the air, I, you know, I, I miss playing pickup, miss, you know, the competitive part of basketball, but we all just got to, you know, continue to do what we can do to, you know, keep everybody safe and stuff like that. Are you able to get any shots up? I know you're a resourceful guy and you got your you got your people. I know when you when you were in high school, you had the the key to the John Carroll gym. But are you are you able to get some shots up? Um, I, I if I really needed to, I could. But right now, from what I'm hearing from everybody, I don't need to go anywhere. Just just because of how serious it is, you know, you, right. don't, you don't want to risk nothing for yourself getting uh, the, the corona, and you don't want to bring it to none of none of your family members as well. So just for how serious it is, I, I haven't really been able, I haven't been able to shoot. So you declare that you're going to go into the draft. What happens after that? I'm sure you have agents. But you haven't signed with an agent yet, correct? Yeah, no. Nah. So I would assume you have a lot of agents who are trying to win you over and trying to woo you and who are recruiting you, basically, right? Kind of like, kind of like college all, all over again. You know, you, you go back to college and Kentucky's calling you and, and Maryland's calling you and, and, and all the other schools. And it's kind of like, just going through that process all over, you know, the agencies are, you know, trying to win you over and, and trying to get you to come to their, I guess their, uh, really their agency and, and just their, they're explaining all the, the statistics and all the things that make them the best agency and why you should come to them. And, and it's really cool to see. When we did the Emmanuel quickly, my view from the top, there was a very, a very famous scene, I guess, where you called a, a college coach and told them that you were not going to be coming there. And your mom, you remember that? And your mom was filming you. And it was like a very raw scene where everyone like saw, like every, every kid at your level goes through that. But to be able to see it is different. Yeah. I'm going to guess that we're not going to see any footage of you telling agents, I'm not coming your way. Uh, nah, we won't be doing that one. Uh, <laughs> probably just be a, like a little post or something uh, on Instagram or Twitter that I'm going with an agency. But, you know, hopefully we can find out soon. Uh, soon what, than what is important for you when it, when it comes to finding the right agent? Like, what are the things that really matter? Uh, that family connection, I think that's a big key. Uh, knowing that they're going to have my back uh, off the court as well. You know, you, you don't just want to be the best basketball player. You also want to be able to have other avenues to create, you know, whether it's money or building your brand or whatever you want to pr present. Um, things like that are, are really key. Aside from an agent, who are the other, like, core people that you have to essentially hire or, or have join your team before your dream becomes true? Like, there's financial advisors, there's – what like what other pieces to the puzzle do you need? Honestly, my my circle is small, so I got my family, which is my mom, my aunt, my uncle, my grandfather, my grandmother, and then and then my my little sister. I got GD, who, and then Kentucky, the Kentucky family. I got all my coaches, so that's pretty much it. Um, when it comes to all that other stuff, you know, whatever agency I sign with, I'm sure they'll help me. Whether I need a, a chef or like a financial advisor or stuff like that, um, that's pretty much that. Though. Last thing I want to ask you, when you look back to our little documentary series that we did, what were your, what were your thoughts on all that? We had GD with the camera following you around the, every AAU event to Egypt. There was right. a picture I put out the other day of you and Calipari on the camels together. 
But what was it? What was it like to have that documentary? I mean, it wasn't a professional documentary. It was pretty homemade. But oh, cool, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Was that? Was that a fun time? Was it? Was it cool to have that going up on the internet every month or so? Yeah, it was definitely dope. Uh, and I think it's cool just to see, you know, uh, where it all started. Everybody sees, you know, now. But you know, just looking back on it, it'd be cool to, you know, just see, you know, where where Emmanuel quickly started at. So shout out to Capital Hoops, man. All right, Emmanuel. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time. I know you're you're awful busy these days. Everyone wants a piece of the 2019-20 SEC Player of the Year, but I'm so proud of you. Um, from the first time I met you to right now, is pretty pretty unbelievable. I remember sitting down next to you at Markel Fultz's graduation barbecue, and yeah. we chopped it up for the first time there. Yeah. And uh, to see you right now, about to enter the NBA draft, is is pretty cool. And I'm I'm really proud of you and uh, all your family, you guys have an incredibly tight-knit thing that BBN has uh, come up close and personal with. Yeah. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited to see what's next for you. Thank, appreciate it, family. All right. Thanks, all right. Emmanuel. Yep.